is a 0.001% chance of making quads, and it happened in this video. Today we're playing at Chasers, a building that looks like a meth lab, but is actually just a card room. I was feeling quite charitable, so I had decided to donate some buy-ins at the 2-5 table. I buy in for $1,000 and get seated right away. Ahoy, mate! In the first time we looked down at Jack Nine Offsuit and the Small Blind. Don't know why we're starting with an accent, but <laughs> player in middle position limps. This is not a hand you should open, but I, I was taking donate buy-in very seriously. So I kick it up to $30. The big blind and limper make the call. Going off to a flop of Jack 6-3 with two hearts. The big blind and middle position both check out a turn, and I'm like, whoa, guys, hold your horses. I am still left to act. I have a weak kicker, and I was actually going to check this for pot control. And a little bit of deception, just to keep the kids guessing. <laughs> if we always bet top pair, it's very easy to play against us. But considering both of them checked, I don't think either of them would check a jack or anything that strong, which makes me more inclined to bet. I throw out a bet of $40. The big blind calls, but the middle position player gets out of the way. Going off to a turn card, which peels off the three of clubs. Still think I have the best hand. Want to price him in, have him call with all of his flush. Wow, I can't speak English. Flush draws. Yep, got it. Nailed it. Want him to call with those. I place a bet of $90. The big blind doesn't think too long before making the call. Going off to see one last card, which peels off the jack of spades. We river a full house out of nowhere. What a way to start the session. However, if he has a busted flush draw, there's no value in betting because he's just going to fold. Furthermore, if I have aces, kings, queens, this jack is horrible for me. This jack feels like a card that he could easily represent, even if he has a missed flush draw. So I decide to check it over to him. I'm just going to let the audio play out. I want you to see how quickly action unfolds here. All in. Yep. So he goes $200 and I'm like, I'm all in. <laughs> His money doesn't even cross the line and the dealer flicks me the all in button. <laughs> I didn't think he had anything. I just thought he was going to snap fold, give me the 200, and we move on to the next hand. But surprisingly, the big blind goes into the tank. He turns to me and he's like, what do you think I have? And I'm like, jack shit. <laughs> he flips over the six of clubs. And I'm like, how the hell do you have that? And then he flips over another six. He had a full house. He flopped the set. I am shocked that I wasn't raised in the flop or turn. Well, this is quite unfortunate for him. After looking at my stupid young face for like two minutes, he's like, this kid just sat down. There's no way he has an actual hand. All right, bucko, show me what you got. He flicks in a chip. We sheepishly turn over the Jack-9 offsuit. River a goddamn motor vehicle and get all the money. That's all you gotta do, bruv. It's not a hard game. Next, we look down at Ace, Jack, and Diamonds in the big blind. Cutoff raises to $20. The guy to my right said, Oh man, here this guy goes again. So I was under the impression that he was loose, opening a ton of hands, facing a late position raise with a wide range. I have a great hand to three bet. I raise it up to $80, and the cutoff doesn't think too long before making the call. Going off to a flop of queen, six, five, one diamond. Not ideal, but I think this is a board where I want to bet small with my entire range. So I throw out $50, and this guy quickly folds. Here we got a fun one. I have ace, queen, offsuit in early position. I raise the $20. The low jack, high jack, and cutoff all make the call. Going four ways to a flop of six, three, three, rainbow. I actually think I'm going to have the best hand a decent amount of the time, but I also don't really want to bloat up a pot. Someone could easily have a three or a six or a pocket pair. Betting seems a little ambitious, and I'm all for ambition, but this one seems a little, a little out in left field. 
Let's keep it in the infield, Buster. I decide to check. Everyone else also checks. Going off to a turn card, which peels off a duck. That is probably the best card that we could have asked for. Now I think we actually have reason to bet. We could charge anyone that just picked up a flush draw and deny equity from anyone that has any random cards that don't make a pair. Because think about it. If we check and someone has 9-8 and the river's a 9, well, what the fuck? He, he had no business being here, and now he takes down the whole pot, dude. That is That sucks. No, that's not going to work. For these two reasons, I place a bet of $40. Action quickly folds to the cutoff, who decides to make the call. Me and the cutoff hold hands walking down to the river, which rips off a ten of clubs. No value in betting. What, what, what's going to call it's worse? We, uh, we give him the green light, and sure enough, the cutoff decides to throw out $80. Well, if he rivered a ten, that is great for him, but I just shrug, throw in the money, he flips over ace five offsuit. The player on my right was like, yo, this guy's a wizard, homie. I was like, why are you gassing me up? This is two five. My best friend growing up loved fishing. And honestly, I don't. When I was nine years old, I went fly fishing with my dad and his buddy. Within three hours, my legs were covered in bug bites. Like 200, I'm not even joking. It was ridiculous. I was crying for three days because I couldn't sleep, couldn't stop scratching my legs. This little story is to say that I hate fishing. I also have mixed feelings because now I look down at two hooks. Good hand, bad memories. What the f*** are we going to do? The low jack limps and the cutoff raises to $35. The button and big blind both make the call. The original razor only has like $300 in his stack. If I put in a three bet, I think the original razor is going to jam and let's just go heads up to a run out. That's what I'm thinking, right? So I put in a three bet to $225. To my shock, everyone just folds and we pick up a hundred something bucks. Perfectly fine with me. I don't have to go fishing, no bug bites, no problems, no ace, king, or queen on the flop. The poker gods really want me to get over my traumatization of fishing because I look down at pocket jacks once again. The hooks are just never going away. This time, four players limp. And the button raises it up to $75. Oh my god. We're playing 2-5, limp, 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 $75. That doesn't feel great. I just decide to flat call. Everyone else folds, so we go heads up to a flop of 10-6-3, two hearts. I check, and the button puts out a bet of $100. We're losing to aces, kings, queens, but if that's the case, then so damn be it. Uh, we are actually going to do what we said at the beginning and donate our entire buy-in because I have a f***ing rocket. Oh, I have an overpair. Dude, if he has me beat, so be it. I'm never folding. At least not right now. We go off to a turn card, which peels off the seven of hearts. This changes things quite drastically. Not really looking to turn my hand into a bluff. Don't really know what worse hand would call. So I just do the thing that I did on the flop and tap the table. This time, the button snap checks it back. Feel a lot better about my hand as we go off to a river, which peels off another seven. Now I think there's a question of leading, possibly getting some thin value from a 10, maybe weaker pairs like nines or eights. If he had hands like ace king or ace queen, him checking back the turn is basically signaling, dude, I give up. You got it. Then again, we still lose to aces, kings, queens. Would he even call a bet with the aforementioned hands? I don't know, dude. In hindsight, I think it's worth betting. I just tap the table and he taps it right back. I flip over the hooks and he's like, oh, shit. He flips over pocket eights. I think if we bet 50, we get a crying call. Missed a smidgen of value, but can't really complain when money's coming your way. All right, smooth session so far. Let's see how we can f*** it up. We look down at Jack Ten of Hearts on the button. The cutoff limps, and I raise it up to $30. Again, when there's a limper, I raise bigger because it dissuades the limper from limp calling. And if everyone folds, you just pick up like 15 bucks, which is perfectly fine. So I raise 6x. The small blind and cutoff both make the call. Going off to a flop of jack-six-five, all spades. 
action checks to me. Someone could easily have two pair, a set, a flush, or a stronger jack. I just listed like 70,000 hands that beat mine. This feels like a pretty good hand to put into my checking range. If we always bet top pair, it makes us pretty easy to play against, so let's keep the kids guessing. I check it right back. We go off to a turn card, which peels off the most innocent duck in the deck. Quackity quack. The small blind checks again, but this time the cutoff says, All right, three buds going right into the sea. 75 buckos. <laughs> Considering we underrepped our hand on the flop, we have a standard faux. We straight, I can't English, but we have a call. The small blind surprisingly calls as well. When this small blind calls, my butthole shrivels up and dies because this guy's the tightest guy at the table. Without a shadow of a doubt, I feel like I have the worst hand. When the river card comes off a who gives a shit, the small blind bets 100. The cutoff and I both look at each other and snap fold. We're like, yep, this guy has the winner. Give him the money. <laughs> sure enough, the small blind flips over ace nine of spades. Just flopping the nuts. Here we pick up Jack Nine of Diamonds. I raise it up, get called by Mr. Nitball on the button, going three ways to a flop of eight, eight, three with two diamonds. I have Jack High, no showdown value, flush draw, seems like a great hand to bet. So I throw out $30. Mr. Nitball thinks that's a horrible price and raises immediately to 150. The button snap folds and I get the hell out of Dodge. Very nice hand, sir. You win the money. A little while passes before my eyes glance down at ace nine of hearts in the big blind. Under the gun raises to $15. The low jack, high jack, small blind, and myself all make the call. Going God knows how many ways to a flop of king jack three, two hearts. Action checks the pre-flop raiser, who decides to check as well. Now the low jack bets out $25. Action folds back to me. I still have a chimp brain and Uga Booga flush draw. I have four of the same. More money's going in the middle. I check raise to $90. The original razor check jams all in for $357. Oh, God. The low jack folds and action's back on me. I actually don't love this spot at all because I feel like you could have a set of kings or jacks or king jack. And against those hands, we're not really in all that great shape. I do a little bit of calculations, carry the two, dot the T's, cross the I's, all that shit. And I said, you know what? I got a flush draw. See you on the river. Call. The original razor flips over King Jack. Oh, God. We're against two pair. We need some help. The turn being yeah, no help. That can't be good. Okay, one last card. Let's try this again, poker. You've been very good to me today. Just give me a heart. Give me a heart. Show me a care. Show me you love me. And sure enough, they do as we river the nuts. Perfect. Not a problem whatsoever. We rake in yet another pot, and it's kind of disgusting how pure we're running today. In the last hand of the night, I have ace jack offsuit in the low jack. I raised up to $30, and only the straddler makes the call. Going off to a flop of 875 all hearts. I actually have no idea what I'm supposed to do here with this hand. Truthfully, I have no clue. I've clearly never heard of a check, so that can't be it. Newsflash, it most definitely is. This hand feels like the pilot passed out and now a random civilian has to conduct the aircraft. It, I just decide to bet small and the straddler makes the call. Okay, sure, seems fine. Let's go off to a turn card, which peels off the nine of spades. This player checks to me. I am just randomly mashing buttons. I don't know if I should check, if I should bet small. Hey, buddy, any six makes a straight. This board's way better for him. Maybe find a check? Okay, or not. Let's bet $75 and get snap called again. That feels great. Let's go off to a river card, which peels off absolutely no help. Who would have thought? This player checks it over to me once again. I feel like I've played good today, but the training wheels came off the bike and I just ran straight into a tree. I have no idea. I'm just going to... I check it back. And the button flips over ace-three offsuit with the ace of hearts. Wow. 
somehow I extract $90 of value when I have no clue what the fuck I'm doing. I decided to take cinematics of my stack and while I'm taking cinematography, my stack decided to yeet the fuck off the table. I was like, oh my God. Even my chips knew they had no business being in my stack. They were like, we need to go back to wherever we came from. And I was like, no, 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 you're gonna come home with me. And they're like, fuck. At this point, I was very, very tired. This hand was an indication for me that it's time for me to get my ass up out of the chair. Oh, Corey, the title of the video said making quads. Where's the quad? Buddy, don't you worry. At this point, I was grabbing a drink to go get drunk off my ass at one, two. However, there is one hand to note, which I think you can guess. We pick up pocket jacks in early position. I raise the $15 and only the hijack makes the call. Go into a flop, which is rather favorable. Jack seven, six. Perfect. I bet small, praying to God that he doesn't fold. And thankfully he makes the call. So we go off to a turn card, which peels off the last Jack in the deck. Bingo, bango, we make quads. Now, at low stakes, I like to build my own pots because even when check two, one, two players with no showdown value, they'll just check it back and pray to Jesus, which fair enough. Uh, so for that reason, I throw out $20, really trying to price them in with flush draws, weaker pairs, don't want them to fold. That would be an atrocity. However, he does not fold and he also does not call. He min raises like a legend to $40. As much as I want to get all the money in here, I think there's only one play, which is to call. If we raise, uh, it folds out all of his bluffs, and can s I think it's going to be hard for him to hold a jack here. So, if he has pocket sevens or pocket sixes, I think he'd raise the flop, but even if he has those hands, they're full houses, and they're most certainly betting the river anyways. So, by calling, we keep all of his bluffs in, and if he does have a full house, he'll just bet the river, and we can check raise all in. So, I decide to call, and we go off to a river, which is the two of spades. Perfect, as the flush draw gets here. And if I had a lot of hands like aces, kings, queens, I, it's miserable run out for my hand. Furthermore, I thought he was bluffing. So either he gets there with a flush, or he has a great card to continue barreling on. Only one play, I check it over to him. And he's like, oh, didn't darn a nabbit. I have jack shit, but I'm too much of a pussy to bet. I check it right back. And I was like... Great check, man. I have four of the same letter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I have quads, dude. We take down quite a little fun pot at one, two. So that's how we ended the night. In for a cool 1,000, out for 2,800. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.